He has a Bachelor of Law degree from the United Kingdom. He's a barrister and solicitor of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. He is a former counsel to the Vice President, Dr. Alex Ekweme. He's a former Secretary Counsel of Legal Education, a former General Secretary, Nigerian Association of Law Teachers, Deputy Director General for Africa International Biographical Center, Cambridge, England, former Chancellor, University of Benin, Chancellor, University of Abuja, Commander of the Order of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and you could go on and on. He's an author of various books and papers on aspects of law. I'm sure someone out there may find it difficult to believe that's just a bit of the profile of a traditional ruler in Nigeria. Yes, a traditional ruler. I'm referring to His Imperial Majesty, Oba David Victor Olagbade Olateru Olagbegi III, the Olowo of Owo. Just in case you are wondering, what or where is Owo? Let me tell you a bit about it by reading a short excerpt from this book titled In the Wilderness of Life, written by the Olowo of Owo himself. Owo is an ancient town in the league of the truly ancient towns in Yoruba land. It is also a very historic town as it straddles two ancient cultures because of its geographical location. To the east, Owo has borrowed heavily, both linguistically and culturally, from the rich tradition of old Benin Kingdom, while to the west, its historical umbilical cord to Ilefe, the cradle of Yoruba race. That umbilical cord is very strong and even legendary. Now, something interesting is happening out there in Ondo State, southwest of Nigeria. This woman, Adejoke Oke Samuel, grew worried about the poor reading culture among children in formative years in that state. So rather than just sit down to complain, she started an initiative called My Reading Time. She has been organizing a series of reading events in different local government areas in Ondo State just to get children reading more. Recently, she took some children to the Palace of the Olowobowo to spend time with the literary-minded king to listen to his experiences and to have reading sessions with him. The book in focus was this one titled The Story of a Judge, which is about the life of Honorable Justice Omolara Dejumo of the High Court of Justice on those states. The king read with the kids and told them how books had shaped his life. Let's show you some clips. Which will it be, or perhaps the grounds will open and swallow her up? No, not today, she thought. I'll miss playing under my bed as well as the mangoes she intended to pluck from the mango tree on her way back home. Who furnishes his household with the produce he sells from his farm? A mother, not the only woman in her father's life, she is the second of the two wives he had. Lara was the first of the three children from her mother. The genesis of the provision store was just a table and chair right in front of their two-room apartment. On the table were all sorts of petty items which were necessities in virtually every home. And the store seemed to attract so many people from the neighborhood. The good fortune on the provision store was not far-fetched. Being a very jovial and sociable person, Lara's mother's personality had a strong influence on every customer that came across her at the store, which made the person happy to patronize the store over and over again. And they planned it for me to be able to do uh, what I told you, two year course, to do it within three or four months. <laughs> so they planned it for me, 
And my landlady uh, was uh, always telling me I was teaching, I was reading, reading, eating, and sleeping. Reading, eating, and sleeping. And I was very, very busy reading, reading, and then sleep also. No other thing at all. And you cannot believe it that I went for the A level subjects in all my three subjects. Not only the one they said I did, did very badly, but in the three. So I finished the, uh, the courses by that April. And I went for the exams in that April. And uh, when the results came, I saw the head of school. I was riding a bicycle. Uh, he, he slowed down. So he said, I should come to school to see him because my results are out. So I went there to see him and he got the result and I cleared all the three subjects. Wow. Wow. We recently announced that we have two copies of this fascinating book on your screen titled A Fatherless People, The Secret Story of How the Nigerians Missed the Road to the Promised Land for two lucky winners. The question we asked you to answer was, who is reputed to be the father of Nigeria? Well, the answer was hidden in that interview we showed you last week. Sir George Goldie Topman, he was born in 1846 and died in 1925. He was a British colonial administrator, organizer of a chartered company, which was later known as United African Company, UAC. Yes, the same UAC that established British rule on the Niger River area and was chiefly responsible for the development of northern Nigeria into an orderly and prosperous British protectorate and later a major region of independence Nigeria. We got a number of correct responses through our social media handles and through a draw. We eventually selected the following two winners. Congratulations to them. If you didn't win, don't give up. We'll be giving out more free copies to some lucky winners very soon. Just stay close to any of our social media handles displayed on your screen. Finally, remember our Meet the Authors event? It's on again on the 31st of August 2018. Three authors, three books, one venue. Our theme this year is Nigeria's Lost History. I will be exploring three remarkable books on Nigeria's history. A Platter of Gold, The Making of Nigeria by Shukwa Shashore. Hubris, A Brief Political History of the Nigerian Army by Akintunde Akinkumi. And A Fatherless People, The Secret Story of How the Nigerians Missed the Road to the Promised Land by Dele Ogun. The three authors will be spending time with 60 selected guests to discuss how Nigeria was formed, fascinating parts of Nigeria's history that have dictated the country's direction, their experiences in conducting extensive researches for their books, and their thoughts on Nigeria, considering the country's history. Well, I wish everybody can be there, but uh, we are making room for only 60. We are giving out some seats for the event. To get one of those seats, one, follow Channels Book Club on Twitter and Instagram and retweet the post about the event, two, like Channel's book club on Facebook, and three, then let us know through Twitter or Facebook why you should be invited. The comments that we find most interesting will earn their posters and invitations. So why not give it a shot? You might just be one of those 60 that day. Guests from the previous episode of Meet the Authors will tell you we had a splendid time last year. So, lots of information to take in, 
you can see that we don't like to sit still around here. Stay close to our social media handles to get all the updates you need. This is where we have to stop today. I'm Olakunle Kasumo. Remember, one great book can change your life. Bye-bye.